Good evening. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Worship and Word. Yes, Worship and Word, uh, the 1st of May. This is May 1st. You made it to see a brand new month yes. in this new year. Well, I guess it's not so new now. We're in the fifth month, but it's a blessing to be here. Yes, it is. In the land of the living, on our way to where they are really living. But I'm not trying to go too fast. Not yet. No, I'm, I'm not holding yet. out, and we're holding out for the rapture. <laughs> Soon and not yet. Yes. <laughs> when he comes, that's where we want to go. And so just want to welcome you. Thank you for being with us on tonight. And just looking forward to just sharing the word of God, yes, getting some um some spiritual food in. That's what we need. That's what's going to carry us through. Remember the parable. Uh, of the two people who built their uh, houses, one built it on the sand, one built it on the rock. And the one that built it on the rock, when the storms of life came, that was the, the house that remained and stayed as opposed to the other. So we need that word so that yes, we can continue Lord. to stand when the storms of life come because they're coming. It is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Just because we're uh, children of God and sons of God and kingdom citizens does not mean that we are exempt from the troubles of life. As a matter of fact, Jesus talked about yes. that in me, you have peace. In this world, you're mm -hmm. gonna have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I took it out of my heart and my mind. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's where I was going. Come that's because we're connected, that's why. Finish it up, yes. Yes, be of good cheer because I have, I have overcome, overcome the, world. the world. Good evening, Julie. Good evening. Yes, number oh, one yes. coming on here. And so, just want you to understand that the more words you get in, not memorize, but it has to be in your heart. Yes. The more word that you get in your heart and you keep it there. I uh, remember what David said, that word have I hidden in my mm -hmm. heart that I might not sin against you. That's important. Someone would still ask my sweetheart, how do you, you just said not memorize, but uh, get it in your heart. How do you get it in your heart? How, what, what? You know, okay, if I don't memorize it, how do I get it in my heart? Well, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have to memorize it to get it in your heart. Meditate. But you don't want it. That's exactly right. Yes. That's where I was going. Joshua mm -hmm. 1 and 8. Uh, this yes, book of the good. law shall not depart out of my mouth, but you shall meditate or out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. But you should meditate in it. Mm -hmm. Continue to think about it throughout the day, because this is not something we do first thing in the morning and boom, we're set for the whole day. Yes. You know, throughout the day, you want to go back, you want to rehearse those scriptures in your mind, uh, not necessarily saying Joshua 1 and 8 and you know, verbatim, but you want to get the concept in sure. your heart. Keep going back to it. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that I can um, learn it so I can apply it, not just learn it for the sake of knowing it, so that I can apply it yes. and get the full benefit of it. And so, yes, because yes. Just when you read something uh, the first time, you don't get the full connotation. No. Uh, you go back and I always see after all of these years of studying the word um, for making applications of my life personally. Mm -hmm. I don't just study to get a word to preach and to teach to others. I, I have to get a word for my life, for myself, for yes. my family, for my household. Um, but all of these years after study, um, and studying the word of God, I see something different many, many times when I keep going back to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, meditating is the way to get the word in your heart. David is simply saying, I have meditated yes. on the word. And the, the, the insinuation of that is like the cow who chews the cud. Yes. He had more than one stomach. Yes. And gets it in the first stomach, he chews, break, it goes to the second stomach to break it down even more so as we're breaking the word down we're getting understanding yes understanding yes. so meditate meditate day and night psalms one talks about meditating and doing it day and night that's and then right. the word gets down in your heart you're not just reciting you're just not uh memorizing but it gets into your heart yes. and that word comes up Ooh, you took it right out at of my mouth. At a mind. very good time when we need it. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Right when um, you're at a crossroads and you don't know which way to go, because yeah. you have that word in there, Holy Spirit has something to bring back. Remember, the word says that he will bring back all things um, to our, 
and he brings all things back to our remembrance. Yes. Well, you got to get it in there first before you can remember it. Yes. So he brings all things back to our remembrance. So as we get that word in there, when we hit those crossroads in our lives, he'll bring back the right path to go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, welcome again. We're going to go to some uh, announcements, some quick announcements. Were you about to say something? Oh, well, just uh, ask everyone to um, share this. Tag and share. Tag, share. So we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody may be just kind of getting up from the evening nap or uh, just just kind of went out of their mind that this is the time for worshiping word. Talk to somebody, text somebody, share this with somebody, and uh, let them know. And even you can start a, uh, a watch party. Uh, tag some of your friends and come on in. And now, she, later on, is going to do some announcements, and then we're going to get into the word and get in there. See, look, you see me look down. I was sharing it myself. Yes, that's good. That's share it. it. Share it. Yes, indeed. Amen. And so, going to have some brief announcements. Uh, I want to get this announcement in the way and out of the way, if you would uh, allow me to do so. Happy birthday, May birthday! Yes, that would include the, my baby girl, I call her, my daughter, Quincy. Quincy, Eddowes, happy birthday! May the 15th. Yes. Yes, how could you forget her birthday? She never lets anybody forget. Oh, no, too bad. It's so special because she's special. Amen. That's right, she is. Yes. And also, Sister Geraldine's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, Sister, Sister Geraldine. We finally made it to May. LaQuinta. Yes. Almost said Royal Layton. That's yes. right. Her birthday is That's in May. Right. That's right, because yes. their birthdays are back to back, mm -hmm. the 25th and the 26th. So happy birthday to you all. You know we love y'all, and yes. you know we want to celebrate you. And y'all do what your, your spiritual father does. Celebrate the whole month. Take the whole month. Yes. And uh, if you get if you feel some extra grace, take it on beyond. Hey, okay. there you go. <laughs> So I wanted to get that one in the way and out of the way. And also to say to Kiara, you left a little early out and we got you taken care of. I promise you, we, oh, yes. we're going to take care of you. We didn't forget about the April birthday because Kiara, right. her birthday was on the 28th of April. So we want to make sure that we take care of you. Yes. And so um, also want to let you know about uh, what we have going this week. Uh, I guess I'm going chronological order. I, I usually don't, but I will. I'm feeling led to do that. So then worship and word is what you are experiencing on tonight. And this happens every Sunday evening at 630 Central Daylight Time. So anytime you want to come back, we're here. Uh, usually unless we're going away on a ministry uh, trip or appointment, we're here ministering on Sunday evenings. And also, what else do we have coming up in the week? Morning manifestations yes. with Apostle Gary Delos. Yes. I was honored special guest to special be guest. a special guest only. Well, I was like a special <laughs> guest. Well, I was able to sit in with yes. with my sweetheart on Wednesday. That was a powerful time. Yes, what a what a great time it was. And of course, uh, receiving your powerful input. Yes, it's a time of sharing. Yes, yes. Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit. And so uh, that's every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. If you want to get some good teaching right now, he's been doing a series mm -hmm. on uh, kingdom worship, yes. praise and worship. Yes. And uh, specifically, he's been talking about uh, the songs of the Lord, so the different Lord. songs that are talked about in scripture. So it's been very good. So you want to get in on that teaching. And also that's on Wednesday, Thursday, we have something we have every Thursday. And that's the Family Prayer Revival. Amen. And um, with the Family Prayer Revival, that happens every Thursday on our prayer line or conference line at 7 p.m. So you're welcome to join us. Say, hey, I need that telephone number. There it is. You call that telephone number. You enter that access code and it'll bring you on the line with us. We're not going to ask you to pray. So please don't feel like we're going to put you on the spot. We won't. We uh, invite you to come in because we understand the power of prayer. Just having prayer going. Remember, yes, you were telling me yes. about the different um, prayer seat, uh, not CDs. Uh, back then, they were albums. Mm -hmm. uh, prayer albums you would listen to. Um, Bishop uh, Mason. Uh, late Bishop C.H. Mason. Yes. My parents uh, bought that yes. uh, recording of him praying when I was a little boy. 
and had never gone to the uh, convocation before, but oh, powerful. And I have uh, uh, a CD I carry in play in my car. Yes. A recording of him praying now, how powerful just the environment and different men of God That's it. who were known to, to just usher the power of God in through their prayers. So yes. just being in an environment mm -hmm. of prayer, if you want to just come on and just put it on speaker and just have it going in the house or wherever yes. you are, it's a great thing to do. And also, if you will agree with us in prayer, just while um, the different ones are praying, just mm -hmm. amen, yes, Lord, I agree, yes. You know, I remember we were riding down the road. I don't remember exactly where we were going, mm -hmm. maybe to visit my hometown. And I had that press CD in. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking you maybe weren't feeling well, but you, when he came on and started praying, you were saying, I actually feel better. Yes. The environment of prayer. Yes. See, see, when when something is anointed, whether it's live or on wax, the anointing is in the sound. Yes. Come on. Yes. The sound that goes out and it still touches people. That's why we have to capture yes. anointed moments. Yes. So that we can remember them and reuse them again because it's still the anointing come on goes out. It's alive. That's right. Yes. And so that's why we want you to come in and agree with us because yes. Jesus even talked about the power of agreement mm -hmm. that um, we'll be heard of our father in heaven when we come together two or three touching and agreeing um, about anything. It will be done of the father for yes. us. So we want to uh, come in and agree and we want to push back what Satan has been uh, trying to bring into not just the body of Christ, but even in the world. We want to push back. We have authority God has given us. And we oh, part yes. of that authority we use, or when we're using that authority, part of the time is in prayer, mm -hmm. in prayer. So just wanted to give that to you. And also um, wanted to let you know if you have a personal prayer request that you have that you would like us to pray, we'll be more than happy to pray for you or someone else if you know of a situation and if maybe you don't want to say it over the phone, you want to send it in an email. The email address is on the screen right there where you can send in your prayer request and we will be glad to pray with you. If you don't want us to mention your name, we don't have to mention your name. Right. You can be anonymous and we can still pray for you. Amen. Amen. And also, if I'm going too fast and uh, these numbers and email addresses are going too quickly, you can go to the YouTube channel, Gary Deloge Ministries, and get this information and not just this information, but other teachings. Even if you want to get caught up on uh, the series, the Kingdom Praise and Worship series on for the morning manifestation, you can do that mm -hmm. on this Gary Deloach Ministries YouTube channel. And uh, last, uh, certainly not least, if you would like to sow, if you would like to give, you believe that, hey, I want to uh, give something to your ministry. You guys have been a blessing. And I really feel the leading of the Lord to do that. That's how you can do that online. Those are the two ways online you can do that through Cash App, through PayPal. And just know when you're sowing that God is going to multiply the seed sown and it's going to come back to you. And we believe that it's going to come back in a hurry because we believe that this ministry is good now. Amen. 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 Those are all the announcements. And uh, we're getting back to now the, the good part. Hopefully, they cannot be taken away. Yes. Yes, indeed. So, if you will, I'll just turn it over to you, my sweetheart, Apostle Gary DeLoach. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. I want to invite you again to share this broadcast with someone. Do it now. Share it. Um, you have friends uh, on your Facebook page that we don't have, and That's someone right. else needs to hear this tonight. Amen. And um, the Lord can press upon my heart to, to talk about this tonight and this. Sunday is called Worship and Word. What powerful time we had the last two Sundays uh, mm -hmm. expanding on the um, the four cups of wine that were shared during the time of the Seder meal to celebrate the Passover. Yes. And talk about something a little different today, but I, I want to say this at the top uh, of the teaching, my sweetheart. Mm -hmm. We are living in a time when I believe that God is refreshing the memory of the body of Christ. Yes. What do, I, what do I mean by that? That we must notice patterns that he has set for us to live by. Uh, we mentioned even Wednesday in our teaching, I believe that we talked about how that 
the pattern of worship um, was set in scripture. Amen. Amen. Talking about kingdom worship and praise, we must do it. Uh, yes. Like the Lord says, uh, Lucifer was the anointed cherub. When we when we think of a worshiper, yes, uh, we think of worship in heaven before um, the earth ever was created. Before anything, worship was going on in heaven. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, Bible says when the uh, prodigal son returned home, that's what he said. And there was music and dancing in heaven. Mm. And there was music in dancing where. In heaven. In heaven. Uh, Bible said there's more rejoicing in heaven. Come on. <laughs> over by the angels. More rejoicing in heaven by the angels. Over one sinner that repents. Yes. Then over 99 just persons or righteous persons. Yes. Who need no repentance. Isn't that powerful? It is powerful. More rejoicing in heaven. Heaven. When one person walks down that aisle, wherever he may be on the beach, and someone ministers to them, or where out on the street, and they receive Christ and enter into the kingdom of God, guess what? The Bible says the more rejoicing is going on in heaven, mm -hmm. we've got to learn to rejoice more. Yes. When somebody comes from darkness into light, by the angels over oh, just one. Well, we just got one today. Come on, that's a reason to shout and raise. All of heaven. All of heaven is all of heaven. one. Yes. And we we so worried about what well, we we was hoping to have ten uh, salvations today. Twenty seven. One. One. And just think about that. That tells us about heaven's priority. Yes. Where in Scripture does it that's say it. that um, God, uh, all of heaven, rejoices over a, a preached message? Where does it say in scripture that all of heaven rejoices when someone prophesies? And I'm not against preaching not at all, all because uh, because yeah. it the uh, preaching of the gospel, it is the power of God unto, unto salvation. salvation. So I'm definitely not against preaching, yes. but God is concerned mm -hmm. about us yes. winning people who are lost. Yes. One of my favorite scriptures to quote when Jesus said, um, uh, to Peter, Satan um, desires to have you and sift you as we. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you're converted, when you have been changed, after you've fallen, when you come back, go and strengthen your brother. Yes. Go win him, bring him in. Notice when Jesus, when he was doing his, um, his ministry in the earth, when he started his ministry, I noticed that he would get uh, brother sets. He would go get um, James and John. He would get different uh, brothers and he would tell one to go get someone else yes. because that's what ministry is essentially the basis of all ministry. Mm -hmm. We serve so that we can minister to the needs of people so that they would see the love of God yes. and come to the Father and be reconciled to him. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about tonight. The church. What's the mission of the church? Um, church as compared to the ecclesia, which is a Greek word for the church. Uh, and we'll read that in Acts 7 38. The called out ones. That's it. The ones that are called out, not called in. Yes. But called out. Ooh, that's and, good. Anytime somebody's called out, you're called to go out, take it out. What was what was the great commission of Jesus in the 20th chapter of Matthew? He says, and he said, go and teach all nations. Yes. Come on. I'm teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. Go get the nations. Yes. Come on. Go go be the ecclesia yes. that influences yes. the world everywhere you are, everywhere you go. So that's the that was a corporate expression that's right. of the body of Christ. And we're going to talk about that. Where we call the body of the bride of Christ in even the body of Christ. I'm excited about this teaching tonight because I think that many times we have gotten locked in into a um, a certain paradigm that you know that we got from a long time ago, uh, and we have left the pattern of what the Lord established. Amen. Amen. He established the church to be an apostolic church that would influence the world. Come on, Amen. that we would be not just the people who gather or synagogue together, 
or together. It's good together because he oh, says yeah, he says uh, don't don't forbid the gathering. That's right. Um, as you know, and some the matter of some is is that they forsake the gathering. Yes. That's not right in the eyes of no. God. Don't forsake gathering. Right. We have, we've had situations the last two years. Somebody said, well, yeah, church was shut. Church was never shut down. There are believers who were still operating, but the enemy definitely wanted to, to meet the voice of the church. Yes. But come on, Jesus said, he said, the gates of hell will yes. not prevail against the church. Anybody with me there? Come on, with bag you. and share. Go get somebody. This is going to be exciting tonight. So the pattern, let's take a look right quick at two scriptures in Acts. Okay. Acts 7 and 38, then we're going to digress uh, back up to the second chapter of Acts. So yeah, um, amen. Of just, of just gathering and coming together uh, and, you know, attendance. Yes. You know, that's, that's mild participation. Yes. You know, I want, if I go to church every Sunday, uh, you know, I've done my duty. Okay, no. We're going to see what the church did. All right. We're going to see what the Ecclesia did. In the earth. Come on. They did more than just attend a synagogue. They just did more than attend a, a Sunday service or a Sabbath service. Yes. They went out on a mission. Yes. Come on. And they influenced the known world. I love saying that they influenced the known world That's in right. such a way that they impacted. Come on, they did things with impact. They moved things. Mm -hmm. I call that kind of situation, uh, those people movers mm -hmm. and shakers. Mm -hmm. They drew attention, not just to themselves, but to the one they were being ambassadors for. That's to right. Christ himself. Yes. Glory, God in, the, in his Christ. And that's what we are called to do and to be. So if we're going to have total participation, we're going from just mild participation to, to missions, to yes. being involved yes. you know, in every segment strata of life. The seven mountains we've heard, and we'll talk about what those are. Those are different areas of influence. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even the marketplace. Come on, wherever we go, we should be representative of the Jesus whom we serve. That's right. Men should know, and when something comes out of our mouth, we're just not there, statues, but he says, go. Yes. Teach all nations. Yes. You got to go to different nations. We got to go to different areas and teach and influence all nations. Acts 7, 38, here we are. And the scripture says here, um, uh, I want to back up a little bit because here, uh, the crowd's response. The disciples are out witnessing and ministering. Uh, therefore, let all the house of Israel know the 36th verse. Assuredly, that God has made that same Jesus. Peter is talking about it. Uh, I'm, I'm in Acts 2, uh, and I should have been at Acts 7, 38. We'll do Acts 2. So evidently, the Holy Spirit wants me to be here first. Peter stands up on the day of Pentecost and he preaches a powerful message and thousands come to salvation. Mm -hmm. A powerful word. My, there's no, I don't, I don't know if there's a sermon other than the Sermon on the Mount that's more powerful than what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost because thousands of souls were added to the church, came into the kingdom that day. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He's not dead. Amen. He's Lord and Christ. Yes. He's on the right hand of the Father, 37. Now, when they heard this, they went, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and what be ye baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall do what? Receive See the, the gift. gift of the Holy Ghost. Then he says in 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. That's us. There were all people, there were all kind of different nations at that Pentecostal ceremony. Amen. Amen. Feast of Pentecost. And that was a great platform. God used it as a platform to showcase who he was and bring people 
into the kingdom in spite of what their belief systems were. That's right. All right. He says, it is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off is to you Jews, even as many as, as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this unto generation. Then they that gladly received his word were what, baptized. Yes. And the same day there were added to them, how many? 3,000 souls. That's a lot of mega church right there. 3,000 souls were added in that one setting when the man of God got through preaching. And then, then they that gladly received him, they were baptized. All right, 42. Here's the one I want to touch there. And they continued steadfastly in the what? Apostles' doctrine. Okay. God organized. This is, you know, the Pentecost was the beginning of the first century church. Mm -hmm. um, the receiving of the baptism in the upper room. Amen. We're coming up on the Feast of Pentecost. And guess what happened? The church, the ecclesia, took on mm -hmm. the and uh, began to be moved by the influence of the apostles. Yes. An apostolic approach, an apostolic influence upon the church. And when we're apostolic, that means we're we're foundational. Yes. Amen. We are we we go beyond just regular church to getting into the presence of God, the glory of God, signs and wonders are following everywhere. Yes. Come on. Yes. Uh, heaven comes to earth because we're representing heaven, amen, and we're able to bring God to the earth realm. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. We're able to bring God to the earth realm and not just expect certain things to happen to the people, and we're able to take him out Yes, in witness. So they were influenced by the apostles' doctrine. Say that with me. They were influenced, influenced by, by the, the apostles', apostles doctrine. Yes, 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 yes. You're going to hear that word come up a whole lot tonight. So they continue how? Steadfastly. Not passively. Not every now and then. Not sporadically. They continue steadfastly. Oh, if the body would be steadfast today, look at how much we can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at how much we'll be able to spread the gospel through the steadfastness of others. I'm not just talking about church attendance, but I'm talking about the church taking upon itself, taking upon themselves the responsibility yes. of taking on the mission of the church of the living God. Yes. Yes. That's every member. That's yes. every joint supply. That's in Ephesians chapter four. Uh, we have to mm -hmm. have that because every person in this apostolic church that you're talking about, everybody plays a part. It's mm -hmm. not just the apostle. Yes. But the people who got saved, the word says right here, clearly they continue in the teachings. Yes. That's what that word doctrine is. It's mm -hmm. teaching. teaching. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 28, um, the very uh, scripture that you quoted, mm -hmm. um, go ye therefore and teach all, all nations, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever yes. I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you will. always, mm -hmm. even until the end of the world. And so this is what Jesus was talking about. And look at them doing what Jesus told them to do. Yes. Look at them going out teaching. Doing look it. at it. And now there is a responsibility upon us when we receive the teachings of Jesus not to stay the same, but what we have to do is we have to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What was uh, what's the foundational teaching that we receive? We have to stay with that. Sometimes we get so excited about a new revelation. New revelation is good as long as it builds on the foundation. Now look at what they did. They continued steadfastly yes. in the apostles' doctrine, which is teaching. Yes. And what else did they continue to do? Fellowship. Yeah. Fellowship. And uh, doing what? I, I want to stop at fellowship. Stop at fellowship. Get because what happens is what Satan wants to do, once a new person comes into the body of Christ, these uh, 3,000 souls, they came into the kingdom of God on that day. They got baptized. They continued in the teaching. 
and in coming together. Mm -hmm. That's the fellowship. Satan desires to pick us off one by one. And he does it when we isolate ourselves. That's why fellowship is so important. So yes, keep going. That's why it tells us how good and how pleasant mm -hmm. it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and talks about how unity is like the anointing. Yes. And what we have to do is we have to keep coming together because something happens when we come together. There's safety when we're together. Oh, you're going to make me advance. No, don't advance. Don't advance. Don't advance. But don't advance. So, so we can say what they continue in the uh, Apostle teaching, teaching that can be also equated with discipleship. Yes, you get three thousand souls. We have to really become uh, concerned about discipling. Yes, and you know, not not just pushing people to make a decision for Christ. You know, we don't we don't need to twist anybody's arm. You know, the, oh, he that's willing. Yes, the person has to be willing to come yes. to Christ. But once they come, come on, yes. we have to disciple, teach them. The yes. ways of the Lord. I used the scripture this morning from St. John 5 in the uh, in the uh, Bible class 39. The scripture says, and this is these are the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures. Search them. Study the scriptures. And say, For in them ye think that ye have eternal life, and they, meaning the scriptures. Yes. They are they which do testify of me. This is the Lord speaking. Yes. So they tell you who I am. Yes. The scriptures tell about my holiness. Yes. Tell you about uh, my righteousness. Tell you about my heart toward the, the family of believers. Yes. Tell you about who I am and about my counsel. So how do we get to find out who God is? We must be discipled. Yes. Disciples uh, are those who are uh on the studies we are under studies mm -hmm. we are under someone and you know what the 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 understudy uh he does what in the movies he fulfills the role of the lead character when the lead character cannot be there usually when the lead character cannot be there he fulfills that role he studies under so he's able to step right in yes jesus says uh, to his disciples uh, he says um I'm going away. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to send you the comforter. If I go not away, the comforter can't come. That's right. But he tells them at one time, he says, you know, greater things you're going to do. That's right. Than I have done because I'm going to my father. Yes. You've been here, being you taught. You're the understudy. And when I go, you're going to step up. Yes. And you're going to, oh my God, you're going to step in. Yes. And you're going to do not only what I have done, you're going to do greater, greater work. because you had the opportunity to, to be here and to be discipled right. under my teaching. Yes. So not only that, then they were discipled. Yes. Through teaching and through fellowship. Yes. That's kind of bringing us together, amalgamating all the parts together. That's right. Uh, amen. That's One right. thing that we taught in our ministry here that once a new believer comes. We teach them the first what? Uh, develop a praise life. Develop, you know, uh, we tell them as, as yeah, develop a praise life. We teach them to be thankful for what God has just done for you. Yes. Tell them how to be thankful. Tell them how to thank God. Because come on, you just had your life change. Yes. You just had a life changing experience, and now you're going to thank the one. Who's responsible? Yes. And then we tell them, tell them to establish what? First, a praise life. Mm -hmm. That's a part, Thanksgiving is part of that. Yes. The second one is develop a prayer life. Prayer life. And then when do we tell them to get into the word? Mm -hmm. uh, that's number three. All right. Uh, desire the prayer life because we need to pray and be connected. Yes. And then what? Get into the word. Yes. As newborn babes. As newborn babes. Yes. To desire the sincere milk. Of the word of God that you would grow thereby. Grow thereby. You need the word to grow. That's right. And so the apostles' doctrine was helping them to grow. That's Amen. right. Amen. And then the fourth thing was what? Get I, to know your um by your new family. Your new family. Your, your brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters in, Christ. in the Lord. So yes. how are we gonna do that? Fellowship. The fellowship. Next thing. So they fellowship. They continued fellowship. They continue and the disciples' doctrine. Yes, teaching. and they continued fellowship. Oh, they, con they didn't stop fellowship. Yeah, there's two things they continued in. Oh, that's they, good. They continued in the apostles' doctrine mm -hmm. and 
See, when you have that and, that means it's that connected together. that's yeah, exactly yeah. right. So they also continued fellowshipping. They didn't fall off. Mm -hmm. They didn't fall back. They didn't do it sometimes. They continued steadfastly fellowshipping. They also. did it steadfastly. We need yes. to do with that word steadfast. Mm -hmm. steadfast. I'm on it. And every word in this particular passage, and we, we, the, the, the Lord deliberately wants us to get stuck right here for a minute and not run away with this. Because that this speaks to, I believe, the strength of the modern day church. Amen. And we have to get beyond thinking just church and attending. That's passive participation. We must think kingdom, which is about missions. Taking the church, taking the mission of the church to the world. Taking it out. Come on. Amen. And demonstrating yes. the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the kingdom comes not just by observation, not watching, no. not looking at it, but it comes with a, a demonstration, demonstration of power. I love that power. If we're in the kingdom, if we're representing Christ, then when we minister, yes, when we are in interacting, yes, on, when we're doing interactive ministry, when we're connecting and interacting with people. Power should be expressed. Yes. Because we have him. We have understudied. We have been discipled. Yes. We have been under the apostles' doctrine, and the apostles taught what was in them and flowing through them. Yes. They taught how to have the power. They taught how to flow with the power. They taught, amen, amen. how that God would work through us and work through the body with miracles. Amen. Yes. Amen. And, they, and that's how it perpetuated. That's yes. how it kept growing. Amen. Yes, amen. So they continued steadfastly, and the word steadfastly has the reference to what? In a resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering manner. Unwavering, dutifully. That means you do it as often as you're required to do it. Yes. As often as you are asked to do it, because it's producing okay. something. Is producing a unity. Yes. Is producing a God-like community. Yes. Come on. What God was after, amen. Somebody said, well, you know, we're the body of Christ now, and we're supposed to love everybody, but I find it hard to love. No, we can't say, according to 1 John 4, 20, we can't even say that we we know Christ and we love Christ and hate our brother. He says we're a liar. That's right. Because there's no way. Because Jesus has taught us how to love. Yes. So in, in, in this apostolic ecclesia, and you hear me with the word, I'm going to explain it. We must understand something here. It is that as the church, as the ones who are called out, and then after they're called out, they're called to, and this is where we really become the ecclesia, to go in influence. Yes. Nations, people, yes. environments, yes. everywhere our feet tread upon, yes. we are to carry that influence. So what was he after? He's after a spiritual, in our, in our um, um, vision, mm -hmm. a Christ-centered, a Christ-like community. Yes, where Christ sufficient. Christ sufficient. In all areas oh, yeah. of living. In every area of living. We're Christ sufficient. Yes. We get it through Christ. Yes. And not only that, a community where there is love. Yes. Come on. Where there are genuine relationships. Yes. Come on, somebody. That's how we get genuine relationships in the body. Through steadfast yes. fellowship. Yes. Come on. Regular yes. fellowship. Yes. Fellowship often. And a community where we honor one another. Yes. Loving one another. Absolutely. Come on. Not just uh, relationships on the exterior, not just superficial relationships. Yes. You know, bless you, sister. Bless you, brother. We see each, each other on Sunday and then no more contact. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. They did, they did it the right way. Not only did they sit under the teachings, but they fellowship and, and here's the word and coming again, and fellowship and. And in breaking of bread. They ate together. Yes. They, they continue to eat together. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. They continue. We used to eat at church more, you know, years ago than we do now. We used to fellowship around food years ago. I looked forward to it, you know. Many of us, before we got older and understood the purpose, we were just looking forward to eating. 
that was uh, Nancy, my home girl. You remember at Tate Temple, there were some great cooks. The food that all the mothers and the, uh, some of the brothers could cook would bring. We would look forward to eating. All mm -hmm. oh, my mother would cook at home and then take something down to the church. And we, she would take good stuff. Mommy, not going to eat. But it was creating an environment, a Christ like environment for fellowship among the believers yes. where you come to know one another. And when we go out, yes. guess what? That goes out with us. By That's this right. shall all men know, Jesus said, St. John, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. another. Now, he, he didn't say just for another. That's right. One uh, to another, which means it's demonstrated in yes. some way on a regular basis. Yes. I must demonstrate my love, okay? Yes. So they continue steadfastly or dutifully. Was that the main uh, definition? Yes. Dutifully. Unwavering. Unwavering. In an unwavering um, manner. Unwavering manner, which in, in an unbroken way. Yes. Then allow that fellowship to be broken. Oh, that yes. word is for somebody. We must not allow fellowship to be broken. That's right. And mm -hmm. while you're talking about fellowship and talking about eating, actually, eating together, remember the scripture where the word tells us to know them that labor among yes. you. See, a lot of times we only know certain parts. We know the spiritual part of that person because mm -hmm. we uh, we worship with them. We come and we're serving with them maybe. But maybe we don't really know anything about them. We yes. don't know how many children they have. We don't know if they were even born here, if they were born in another state, just little small things, things that you may not realize you may have in common with them. Right. And when you know them that labor among you, what happens is it is very difficult for Satan to come in and bring division. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important that fellowship so important and breaking a bread. A lot of times we find out when we talk um, with one another while breaking bread, we don't just talk about scripture. Sometimes we do, but a lot of times we just talk about natural things. And that part is very important. We have a group of friends, uh, pastor friends, where we sometimes get together yes. and we'll sit down, we talk, we have a great time and we're able to share things besides ministry things, just natural things. And that part, about life. Yes. yes, that is very important. We need more of that in the body of Christ because it helps us to get to know one another and come closer together. Amen. 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 All right, let, let's get back to it. So they continue in. Steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, number one, mm -hmm. and fellowship, number two, and in breaking of bread, number three, yes. and in prayers, number four. Wow. And they continue to do these things. And what happens in the fourth third verse? And fear came upon every soul, wow. and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now look at this. Mm -hmm. By the church, he's amassing, he's bringing a group of people, the first century church, to be a Christ-like community, to be a community of believers. But there is a honor, relationship where they go, and take the love of Christ out, amen, amen, and release the power wherever they go. Fear came up on every soul. There was a reverence for God Yes, that they all begin to have because they're in the presence of the teaching. Yes, And you know, with the apostles, you know, things begin to come forth. Uh, revelation begin to come forth. Yes. I believe prophecy begin to come forth. Yes. Things that they had not heard, God will begin to give direction as to what he's about to do next. Yes. That has a way of building our faith. Yes. Building our expectation. Yes. My God, what's God going to do next? Oh, I can't wait to see what, what God is going to do next. And then not only feel, but they begin to see, the Bible says, so many wonders and signs were done by the apostles yes. because there was unity in the presence yes. of his church. I want to go uh, go quickly. We'll hold this to Psalm 133. Now, this is where we see the corporate expression of the church, of the ecclesia, as they then go out. Amen. Amen. They then go out and they're scattered abroad, teaching, carrying the word on a mission for the Lord. So 
The expression is, uh, there's an acronym that I've used in teaching from this particular chapter, and that acronym spells the word WIFE. Yes. W-I-F-E. Revelation 19 and 7 talks about Christ and his bride. Amen. Amen. Uh, there's references in Ephesians 5, 21 through 25. You know, Christ loved, the husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church yes. and gave himself a ransom for, or as he gave himself for his bride. Yes. Come on. So that word, that acronym that spells wife, the first letter is W, representing worship. Yes. When they came together, they worshiped. And we said Wednesday, I said, Lucifer was the anointed worshiper in heaven. Yes. And when he was created, the Lord said, you are the finished pattern. There won't be another pattern after you. That's right. Come on. And how you set this thing, how things will set, is the way we are to worship. We are to follow a pattern that God has set. When he when he created and uh, Lucifer, literally, the mold was broken. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing else after this. And that worship is going to carry over. David's tabernacle was such that the Lord said, this is going to be an eternal memorial. And we saw the kind of worship that went on in David's tabernacle. That's right. So that's patterns. We must get back to patterns. We yes. must get back to how God has structured something. Come on. And even though we see this, uh, some things in the Old Testament, but here we are in the New Testament, the yes. first century church. That's right. What is the pattern? Come on. Sitting under the apostles' doctrine. Yes. Amen. Amen. Church now, th this is an apostolic church. This is an apostolic time. Amen. 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 So, wife, worship, I is for intercession. They continued in prayer. Intercession, right? That's right. And then F, fellowship. Amen. Amen. They continued to fellowship. Amen. The enemy fights fellowship in the body. Yes. I know why. Because he knows what's going to happen when we begin to fellowship steadfastly. The word tonight seems to be steadfastly. Yes. We got to continue in the doctrine. Come on. That's right. Uh, the apostolic is stronger. We need at the apostolic anointing in our cities because it's a, it's an anointing that's able to challenge the Goliath, the spirits that's that are, are resistant to the word of God that's coming right. forth. Come on, the apostles are able to attack principalities. Yes. Amen. Because Amen. they are first in God's order. Yes. They are first in time. They are foundational. Come on. They they, they the, the, the the prophets are the seers. Amen. But the apostles are the ones that have the, they have oversight. Amen. Yes. They can see beyond and they know the plan of God. So in a city where regions are being held by the enemy, we need the church to be apostolic in this hour. Yes. Without apostolic agency, I said it before on this broadcast, uh, maybe last year, we're just meeting. That's it. We're just congregating. Yes. And going back home. Yes. But we gotta we gotta find ways as they did in the scripture. Well, they did this come together. Yes. And they had every time they came together. I believe when we come together, there ought to be times when we hear the doctrine talk. Yes. Then there ought to be times we can just have fellowship. Yes. And eat and enjoy one another. Yes. Come on. Amen. And, and then we have prayers. So I is for intercession, F is for fellowship, and the last letter of that acronym. Uh, is E for expression. When the corporate anointing goes forth, yes. you're going to have powerful miracles. You're going to have powerful signs and wonders yes. done. Uh, why? I want to show you right quick. And 133 of Psalm 133. Behold, how mm -hmm. good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard yes. that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing, That's even right. life forevermore. He commanded life and God commands life. Zoe life is the God kind of life. Yes. What I want to say is that even in Amos 3, 3 and 2 walk together except they agree. Mm -hmm. But when we come in agreement, he says, good and how pleasant it is, the anointing is like. Yes. 
the oil that was upon the hand, the anointing of Aaron. So when we come together in the midst of unity, there are two things that happen here. There's a commanded blessing yes. that's called light, even life yes. forevermore. And a powerful flow of the oil comes down. Yes. Powerful flow of the oil. So when we have the apostolic in God's ecclesia in his church, that's a powerful flow, downward flow of the oil. And guess what? When the oil flows down, mm -hmm. the same results are reproduced. Okay. The same kind of power ministry goes out and is reproduced. Yes. Amen. 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 And then the commanded blessing, God said, just get unified. Yes. Just get into unity. Yes. And you're going to see what's going to happen. Yes. Yes. And uh, apostles are so important to have the apples on uh, the apostle be a part of the church because yes. what you're, um, I hear you saying is we uh, had a lot of different restorations. Well, we always had evangelists, pastors, teachers. Yes. There was a restoration of prophets back in what the sixties and seventies and the eighties. And, and the apostles, and now you hear more people talking about their apostles, the restoration of, of apostleship, apostleship being very important because, like you said, it's foundational. Well, there are some places where there had not been an apostle. Right. And some foundational truths were either not taught mm -hmm. or they were lost. And needed to be restored. And needed to be restored. Uh, hence, having an apostolic church, apostles going out throughout the body, making sure that the foundation yeah, of yeah. truth remains um, remains where it is and remains the foundation, that it's restored. And if it had not been um, properly laid, that it is properly laid. Mm -hmm. That's why apostles are sent ones. Mm -hmm. And it's what, what did you say, Church of Corinth? Yes. Build upon the foundation of the apostles mm -hmm. and prophets. And prophets built upon a man. So, yes, that truth, those truths, yes, are restored and placed in order so that God can continue to do what he said in Matthew yes. through Jesus upon this rock. Yes. I'm building my church. That's it. Come on. He didn't say just, uh, I'm building my synagogue, I'm building my church, I'm building my body. Yes. Of believers to right. do my assignment, do, to yes. give them assignment in the earth. He didn't say, you know, the, the, the apostles are going to go out and they're going to build their own. No. no they're going to go out and build and establish for me. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. Then. Amen. So, yes. so the anointing is going to bring that to pass. Yes. All right. So many were added to the church. Go to uh, 7 and 38. Got to move right quick. All right. Don't have much time left, but we want to start this. And uh, I know we won't get probably halfway through this tonight, but I wanted to start this and we'll continue next Sunday. All right, uh, Acts 7 and 38, he talks about the ecclesia. okay? This is he that was in the church in the wilderness mm -hmm. with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Yes, yeah, so this is explained in the Greek text, text as the ones who were called out the church that was in the wilderness or the called out ones, a yes. group of believers who have been called out. They were called out of Egypt. Okay? Yes. Now let's go to first Corinthians. Yes. Yes. And so I want to make a point. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. Notice. So it did. So the church didn't begin in Acts. And this is saying that the church that was in the wilderness, mm -hmm. when it said, this is he, the scripture right above that yeah. was talking about Moses. The, um, that Moses was ministering to them. And, um, but he's talking, he's saying that when he called them out of Egypt, they yeah. were the church. They were the church. So the church did not begin in Acts chapter two. Mm -hmm. That uh, church began when he called his people out of Egypt. With no, with no seed even within them. That's no it. Over there. That's it. Come on. Just he, wanted to make the point. He was their covering. That, God was. Ooh, hallelujah. God That's covered it. his church. But they were out there in the elements, but yes. yet they represented God's called out one. And he had a plan for them. Ooh, yes. His plan was to represent him. Come on. This uh, people he chose, uh, your, your kingdom of priests, 
Yes. I'm bringing forth my kingdom even in the wilderness. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that the world would pay attention to them. Yes. This is my people. This, yes. These are my people. This is my church. Okay. Yes. Let's let's go to 1 Corinthians um, 12 uh, in uh, 21. Hallelujah. 12 in and 21. So now we are the body of Christ who are we. We are members in particular, amen. We belong to Christ and we attend the church, but we are the ecclesia, amen. Yes, amen. When it comes to going out and demonstrating an expression as being called out, we're not called in to stay in the church. That's right. Or stay in the midst of one another. The building. In the building physically now. Right. And not only that, but to just stay among ourselves. No. But as we are empowered, we go out. That's right. We come together to worship. That's it. But we depart to serve. Yes. When we leave those four walls and when we leave the company of one another, we are carrying out. Look, look, look at that effect. Everybody going out in different ways and different locations mm -hmm. and different places and influencing. Yes. Everywhere we go. Yes. We should be talking about massive numbers. Yes. Like on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. All right. Before the end is over, is here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, I think it's 12 and 21. And the eye cannot say unto the hand. Okay. Um, I think it's before that verse. Now we are the body of Christ and we are members in particular and we need one another. And we're going to go from there to Ephesians chapter 4. So look at how important it is as the first century church new testament church as it's sometimes called was established and there was connectivity amen each part serving uh a meaningful part 12, 27 27 thank you my sweetheart you're welcome 12 and 27 and the word of the lord says what they now we are the body of christ mm -hmm. and members in particular so we are the body of christ and members in particular, which means we need one another and every yes. one of us as a member has a role, has a part to play yes. other than just attending. That's right. Remember, that's passive participation. That's right. Uh, but every joint has something to supply as they did in that day. Yes. That's right. To have a, a, a member, he's uh, making reference to the body because mm -hmm. yes. even, even the scriptures above that talk about the I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to give a, a picture, because I'm big on pictures, just a person showing up is not good enough. That's just right. like having a hand that you can't move. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't need a hand that can't move. I don't need a hand that's paralyzed, in other words. Mm -hmm. I need a hand that operates. Yes. I need a hand that's moving, yes. that's doing the function to which it was created. And that's every single person yes. in the body of Christ. Every one of us is um, created to do something in the body. Mm -hmm. We all have a function and when we just show up, we're just limp. We're paralyzed. We're not doing what we're called to yes. do. You just touched something and that displays to me the uniqueness of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're one. Yes. When we come into the kingdom when we're saved, we're all given the spirit, one spirit. Right. Come on, the spirit of God, capital X. Yes. Which makes us one. Yes. One body. Yes. But yet, even though we're one body, we are members in particular, which means we're still one, though each individual member has functionality. Yes. You just talk about function. Each member has a function. Let's back up now to uh, the 18 verse. Now God has set the members, every one of them in the body as it pleases yeah. him. As it pleases please. him. Yeah. Amen. Yes. So members in the body, uh, there may be some an apostolic calling on your life, a prophetic calling upon your life, um, gifts and calling, the divine gifts of the spirit. Somebody may be operating in different gifts, but they're all needed. Yes. And they're all given by the self-same spirit, one spirit. Come on. So we're not divided across the lines. We're still one, but we have personal 
uh, functionality according to the gifting that God has given us. Yes. Because he has placed us in the body yes. for the purpose of function. Right. And we're not all functioning under the same gift. Amen. We don't all function. Not top every year. No. Our, I like what it says even in 29, are all apostles. Mm -hmm. Are you saying some who are watching have an apostolic call, some who are watching have yes. a prophetic call. Maybe you're watching and you have neither. Maybe your gift yes. is the gift of healing. Uh -huh. Maybe it's uh, prophecy or not prophecy, or maybe it's um, um, Hospitality. the gift of miracles mm -hmm. yes. or a healing yes. or a word of wisdom. That means that you have different things that are operating in you. It doesn't mean that it's not equally as important. That's right. We all have different functions. Because he has set us, every one of us, yes. in the body as members as it pleased him. And if um, they were all one member, where uh, were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? That's why it's miraculous. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Well, the feet has got to get you there. Come on. That's right. There's a correlation between the brain and the feet. The brain will tell us physically to do certain things, but it has to have the participation of the other parts of the body. Amen. Yes, amen. And um, what works? 22? Yes. Yet. So he says, nay, no. Much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. All of this in the body of Christ. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. So to bring the uncomely parts, yes. we all have a function so that we can operate as one so we can influence yes. everyone we come in touch with. Amen. Amen. Um, so then let's go to Ephesians 4 now. So we've got to come together and know the function of the church so that we can have uh, greater results. Amen. Amen. Mm. Whether one member suffer, all the members suffer. So yes. we're part of the body first. Ephesians 4. Yes. Ephesians 4. It's one of my favorites. Ah, uh, yes. We're called to be an expression of God in the earth, the church, amen. So amen. the church needs to be the ecclesia. The church speaks of, let me go now. Church speaks of a place um, where people gather and uh, in the place and influence the place there influences who we are. When we came into the body of Christ and we, we, we went to church, People told us we needed to become a member of a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Amen. Amen. Uh, the church, Revelation says, is the pillar and the ground of truth. So we go there because we're getting truth. Amen. Amen. We're being established in the things of God. So then our identity is influenced by the church. By the, the body by the, of baptized by the body of baptized believers, yes. by the apostles' doctrine, yes. amen. amen, and the fellowship of believers, those who have discipled us, yes, uh, we, we our identity becomes influenced, right? And then once we receive our identity, uh, that's where we learn who we are. Yes, sometimes we didn't know what gifts we had. That's right. Until we came among, came into the church, or uh, and then and got the teachings. Yes, and then we became. We realize that we are the ecclesia, not just the church sitting still, but the church going out to influence uh, the identity of other people, influence the life of other people. So the building is not the church. No. The people are the church. They are the we church. We are the church, yes. not the building. And when we come together, we're influenced yes. by what we learn as a body of baptized believers. Yes. The ecclesia, which is the call not once, it speaks of a people who gather in a place to influence it out of their identity. We influence it out of our identity, going from the inside out. We go and we are commissioned, as God commissioned us, that we should go 
and set our feet on places. So wherever the soul of our feet tread upon, it becomes our possession. Yes. Go and teach all nations. Go. Baptizing them in the name of it. Go get the nations. Go. So we become the ecclesia that influences, amen, others as we go out. Now look at how this happens. We are joints. We are connected that we may supply something to the mission yes. of God's church. Yes. Did you find this week? Ephesians 4? Yes. Um, I don't know where you want me to start. Okay. I'm thinking verse 20. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, um, how about every joint in, supplies? In 11? Yes. And he gave some apostles yes. and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ mm -hmm. till we all come in the mm -hmm. unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of mm -hmm. the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love. Now here's where we're becoming the ecclesia, coming into maturity. Yes. He's called some to be apostles to do what? To bring us to a place of edification, understanding and knowing the work of the ministry and for our perfecting it shall we all come that we may not be tossed as children yes but that we come into the full stature yes of the measure pick it up for me of the, the stature of the fullness of christ fullness it's time for the church to operate in the fullness of christ in yes. other words everything he did what did he tell the disciples you're supposed to do it in a greater way. Yes. Come on. Yes. If it's working of miracles, we're supposed to do it greater than what he did. Yes. If it's raising the dead, come on. He says, yes. heal the sick. That's right. You raise the dead. Yes. Come on, somebody. You make decrees and things will happen. Yes. So once we operate in the full measure, yes. we're going to go out and we're going to affect the known world in our day. Yes. We're going to go out with impact. Come yes. on. Mm -hmm. We're compacted mm -hmm. to impact. Yes. And he's going to tell us how compact his church is. Read it for me. Keep reading. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him yes. in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working mm -hmm. in the measure of every part, yes. maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. In love, yes. So every joint supplies something, right? Yes. That's a joint that supplies something to the whole. Yes. So what then are we to be as the ecclesia? We are a called out assembly uh, of heaven, commissioned to rule and commissioned to reign like Christ. Yes. Rule, have dominion in the earth. Yes. And reign. And how can we do that? When we come into the full statue. Yes. Into the fullness of who he is in us. But how do we do it? Amen. How do we do it? Good question. How do we do that? Let's. Let's get some scripture here. Hebrews 10, 24. How do we do it in light of the fact of what we see the church being today? We got to return to the structure. That's right. We got to return to the pattern of what Christ called us to be. Amen. Amen. In reality, dealing with some realities, generally speaking, the ecclesia in the book of Acts in the past and the ecclesia that we see today. Uh, where are we to start? Look at Hebrews 10, 24. says... And let us do what? Consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Mm -hmm. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. The day approaching. So we need unity more than ever before. He says, not neglecting, not forsaking the assembly. That's a military word. Yes. Assemble. 
Yes. They blow the the the, uh, the trumpet for the soldiers to assemble, which means to get in order and don't break rank. Why? Because the power in this ecclesia, when we move together, mm -hmm. I believe that we're in the day now when individual, you know, um, fellowships, let me put it like that, um, uh, individual parts of the church, fellowships where we have different fellowships. Praise Center Church for All Nations is a fellowship of believers. Um, uh, soul gathering. A uh, uh, minister. That's a that's a assembly of believers. Amen. Amen. But the church is the entire body of baptized believers. Yes. But we come together. I believe that we're not going to see the power of God manifested like we really need to see it, and God wants it to be until we begin to bring what we supply. Yes. Amen. Which is going to involve some coming together yes. in spite of our meeting places. Mm -hmm. Where we're going to have to come together. Amen. And establish some con congregational things together. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. I don't have my own thing here. When the Lord said, go, if the Lord said, call this brother, call this brother, let's come together. Yes. Let's have some meetings together. Let's do some missions together. Yes. Let's do some of the things, whatever is in your vision. Let's work together to get it done because all of this is for God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So he says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. We've got to get into alignment with God's plan and with God's design. Not forsaking. Here's, here's a definition for that word assembly. It is the Greek word uh, episunago. Episunago. It speaks of the assembly of the Jews on the Sabbath, which according to uh, Amen Paul was the habit in those days he says don't forsake it yes don't forsake it because when yes. we forsake something's missing yes what we supply is going to be missing amen amen but it does not say that we are called to go out and do our own thing we're called to work together in amen. fellowship one more scripture matthew 16 and 18 and then i think we're going to stop it right there and pick it back up next Sunday evening. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to embrace the word that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. So he says here in Matthew 16 and 18, what is he doing? Upon this rock. And I say also unto thee that upon uh, mm -hmm. that thou art Peter, and upon this rock right. I will build my church, mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell, no way, can come against the church. Of the living God. One more, 18 and 19. Before we move 19, on, yes. he's not talking about St. Peter's Rock. <laughs> I just wanted to put a, a pen in there and say he's not talking about a physical rock. No. He's talking about the truth that came out of Peter's mouth. Yes, it was which, when Jesus asked, Whom do men say that I am? And then they said, Some say that you're Elias or Elijah. Some say that you're John the Baptist. And he said, well, who do you say that I am? Peter opens his mouth and says that you are the Christ. You are the Christ. Or the, in other words, the Messiah, the one that we're waiting, we've been waiting for. You're he, you are he. And he said, uh, flesh and blood, Peter did not reveal this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And upon this rock, this truth that just came forth out of your mouth. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Upon this a rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, upon the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He is the anointed one. He is the Christ. Hallelujah. And upon this rock, that truth, he's going to build his church. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole um that is the chief cornerstone of the whole church. Us all together being lively stones fitted together to make a, a, a living building for him. Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. And without the chief cornerstone, you have no building. Compact. Yes. To impact. Yes. They were so compacted. Yes. They were so unified. Yes. They affected the known world. They influenced the known world. I'm sorry. Where you got compactness, you're going to have impact. 
Yes. Uh, sounds like a movie. The impact. Waiting the impact. The <laughs> compact for impact. Yes, I love it. Uh, we're going to stop here. One more scripture I want you to read, sweetheart, from Matthew 18 and 19. So what do we got to do to get back to this? We got to embrace what the word says. Yes. Embrace the word. And um, the one thing that we get from this, a you know, vision is necessary. And yes. once we get our visions based on this, the Bible says without well, a vision, men cast off restraints. Yes. They perish. But when we embrace the word, the word, we're going to embrace the work of the apostolic anointing where we're going to be taking influencing regions that's Hallelujah. once been so infiltrated by the demonic amen, by Satan, principalities, yes. and you got all kinds of things going on. And then we're going to see that those areas will turn. Yes. Those regions will turn. Yes. And, and, and for God. Yes. Come on. He's given us the heathen. Yes. For our inheritance. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the ends of the earth for our possession. He's given it to us. Yes. We just need to take it. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says here, Matthew 18 and 19. Again, I say unto you yes. that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything mm -hmm. that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. If we can just agree. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I believe that we're headed to uh, agreement because we're in the days, uh, the last of the last days. Yes. And a great revival is coming. Yes. Upon this land. Amen. Great end time manifestations amen. of the power of the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us. Yes. I pray that your Sunday has been filled with the presence of the Lord, with uh, uh, the glory of the Lord, and that you have been in fellowship, that you have been in uh, the midst of the apostles' teaching, and that you have something to inspire you to start your week, to go out and begin That's to right. influence somebody in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and bring them into the kingdom. Well, we love you. Uh, any last words? Any last observations, Lady Rhonda? Oh, yes. Just wanted to, again, uh, give you an opportunity. If you, uh, God's leading you to give. You want to give. Those are the two ways that you can give online. And, of course, I didn't get to uh, the way that you can give through the mail. That's how you can give through the mail. I didn't touch on that a little earlier. But if God is speaking to you to give, by all means, just obey. And you know that there's always a reward that comes with obeying God. Exactly. And so I want to thank you for being with us on tonight. Uh, and just thank you for your time and pray that you have a blessed and a prosperous yes. week. This um, from today, moving forward. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Be blessed and we love you with the love of the Lord.